Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're going to talk about and drive one of the most iconic, probably the most iconic hot rod of all time. It's a 1932 Ford High Boy, and it's owned by a good friend of mine, a man who uh, is the consummate car guy, certainly here in Los Angeles. When I came to town 30 years ago, he sort of took me under his wing more than 30 years ago. Uh, he still has the best garage with the coolest stuff and always very generous with his time and sharing his knowledge and he knows what he's talking about. And this car is so historic. Well, you'll find out what I mean. Let's meet Bruce Meyer. Bruce, come on in. Hey, buddy, hey. good to see you. Always good to see you, Jay. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. Uh, he is a real hot rod historian. He likes all kinds of cars. He's got Ferraris and, and Gull Wings, but I know hot rods are your true love. Could you grow up right here in Southern California? Yeah. Uh, right here in Hollywood. You're right. And loved hot rods. It was a forbidden fruit for right. me because my parents hated cars and hated hot rodding. So. <laughs> We always say you're never too old to have a happy childhood. That's right, right exactly, exactly. So that's when we, you know, kind of got back into hot rodding in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, you were right when you were saying this is an icon because it truly is. This is one of the very first hot rods of all time because it is on this. I was so impressed with this. This is like, what, issue four of Hot Rod Magazine? Yeah. Notice that's, the date, 1948. Yep. And I believe... It's the first actual, because most of it were Bonneville speed cars and race cars. This, it's the first hot rod on the cover of Hot Rod Magazine. It is, it? and it was photographed by Bob Peterson, the oh. publisher, the owner of Hot Rod Magazine. And this is Bob McGee in front of USC driving his cool ride, right. which is um, a very important hot rod. Now tell us why it's important. When you think of a hot rod, this is what you think of, a 32 Ford high boy roadster. And by high boy, that means the body is mounted on top of the chassis. And you also think of it as no fenders. Right. So there's a lot of cars that kind of look like this, but you have to look back into 1947 and 1948 when this car was built, when the guys came back from the war and were, you know, kind of spending their hard-earned combat pay on cars. This car was cutting edge. So uh, starting at the very front of the car, the spreader bar is V'd. Now the cool thing is to have a V'd spreader bar. Right. This was, think, 1947. Right. Um, it has a three-piece hood because most... The well, comes apart here and here and the other side. That's right. right. Because most, you know, cars of that area had a, had a hinge right down the middle so you'd open the hood and it would hinge on the top. Right. This was a three-piece hood. Explain this here. There's no... Most cars had a radiator cap. Right, exactly. Well, this was shaved and peaked, and it had this beautiful peaking done by Valley Custom, which was the custom shop probably in Southern California of the period. So this is a real signature for this car as well. The other feature that is the first on this car is the door hinges are hidden. Okay. Oh, Normally, yeah. they're on the outside. The other part that makes this car look so special, and when you look at it on the cover of Hot Rod Magazine, it looks like a sports car. The car is on the ground. And what they did, they zed the frame. So they just brought the car down on the ground. Explain what you mean by zing the frame. Sure. Well, the frame is usually like a straight frame, and it right. kind of goes over the rear axle. What gotcha. they did is they notched, the, they took the frame, cut it, made it raise, you know, kind of raise oh, the frame, right. which kind of drop the car on right. the ground. Over the axle, yeah. Over yeah. the axle, right, right. right. So in other words, it brings the whole car down on the ground. This was the first car, to my knowledge, that, that, that they applied that to. It also has a one-piece trunk, and on the dash of the car is a Dry Lake's timing certificate at 112 miles an hour at Harper's Dry Lake. There was Harper's, Muroc, and um, El Mirage. Right. Well, we also should explain, you know, we always think of hot rods as having small block Chevys, but this was built before there were small block Chevys. In fact, before there were hardly any V8s. This has what, the Ford, what, 221? Yeah, it's a 21 stud, right. 1937 okay. Ford. So this was an upgrade. Oh, now, that'd be the 239, which? which, which? Well, the, the, they came out with the 21 stud, I believe, in 32. But right. they had, originally, the, there were, the water pumps weren't involved in the, it, it was kind of supposed to siphon up. Thermal siphon, yeah. And so this car has uh, water pumps, right. which it needs for the federal mogul head, right. those copper heads. Um, and it's high compression heads, a couple of carburetors, you know, just, you know, uh, it's definitely a modified car. And, and when you say copper heads, the, the heads are milled from solid blocks of copper. I can't tell you how they were made, but they're gorgeous yeah, and yeah. they're copper. Right, right. <laughs> I don't know if they're milled or, or cast. 
I mean, it's amazing how modern it looks. I don't know whether it looks modern or if it just looks old because we copied the old. So, it, but I mean, obviously, like you said, it sits sits much lower. Even these tires. Yeah. I mean, you can't. Did you have to have these specially made? These are old race tires, and actually, I think they got the idea from tractor tires. Right. But these were the tires that everybody ran in the period. They ran dirt track tires on the back often, and these track tires in the front. These are what the Indy cars and what the race cars had. These these were, you know, four groove Firestones. Yeah. And these are original. You know, I can't stress how important this car is. I mean, this is sort of mecca for hot running because it all comes back to this. You know, so many of the modern hot rods look like this now. We just take it for granted, oh, this is another one. But it's not another one. It's the one. I mean, and there is the proof right there. And I love the ads on the back. There you go. Dual carb setup with manifold, 28 bucks. I'm not paying that kind of money. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing article. To now, be. when you got it, was it pretty far gone from what it had been originally? Because hot rodders constantly update. Was this engine in it when you got it? No. Okay. Um, and that's a really good question because hot rodders just, they continue to evolve and right. they keep changing and tweaking. So the car started like this. Then Dick Scritchfield put a small block Chevy in it. Right. This car has probably been, I don't want to say every hot rod movie, but most hot rod movies, because he ran side pipes and he would take right, the hood yeah. sides off and yeah. he painted it yellow and it's been <laughs> a lot of different colors. When I got it, it was black, it had side pipes, Halibrand mags that were kind of dated looking, yeah, yeah. but the chassis is the original chassis, the body's the original right. body. Now something else about this car that makes it unique, this car is being honored by the post office, isn't that correct? I mean, this is huge for hot rodding and this car. And I was so impressed that the post office selected this car. I mean, they have obviously done their homework. Sure, sure. And uh, so I want to compliment them on that. And I know hot rodders everywhere are taking great pride. And it's the first hot rod ever to be featured in a stamp, I believe. To my knowledge, okay. for sure. And, and the postmaster general is a hot rodder himself. He's a car guy. He's been here before. Pat Donahue. Pat, come on in. Uh, Jay. People of Donahue? No, Donahue. What? Donahue. How are you? Good to see you, You must have gotten that your whole life. Yeah, really I have. <laughs> you know Bruce? <laughs> Good to see you. I'm a big so, fan of his. Well, tell us, tell us how this car, well, tell us why hot rodding was chosen to be uh, featured on the United States Post Office stamp and why you chose this one. Well, we get uh, a lot of requests, about 20,000 requests a year for stamps. And hot rodding on automobiles is one of them. And it goes through a process. We've got what's called a citizen stamp advisory committee and what these guys do is they look at all the suggestions they picked hot rodding mm -hmm. and then they figured we've got to pick the best cars so there was a long search there was a lot of work done like bruce said uh, we went out and looked at many cars and it pretty much came down to two of them the two that we've got on the stamp and they really depict exactly what hot rodding is all about. Now, is this a appointed position? The, stu the what is it? The Citizen stamp advisory stamp advisory committee. Stamp yeah. advisory committee. I can, I can appoint you. You yeah, want to be on it? Well, I mean, it just that sounds like one of those one of those cushy government jobs. Oh, I don't no, know. No. It's, the it's, stamp it's, advisory committee. It's free. It's not. Uh, cushy. Oh, it's free. You don't get paid. Free. You don't get paid. Oh no, there's no pension involved. <laughs> yeah. When I retire from the stamp advisory committee, you, I don't get like sixty grand a year yeah, plus could a take, house. You home. could pick a uh, hot rod. Oh man, okay, that's very funny. So I imagine you must have looked at th thousands and thousands of... Yes, many different cars, a lot of different recommendations. And what the, idea, the, the final selection came down to two cars that represented the history and were iconic. And this was one of them. Yeah. And everybody said there's a, there's a history on this car, goes back to 48, many different owners, stories on it, and that's why it was chosen. And Bruce has owned this car for at least 25 years, right. correct? So mm -hmm. this isn't like some, some new thing. He's the guy that brought it back. And did you find this engine and put it in? I mean, and do, and do the whole Right, thing? we did it at the SoCal Speed Shop. Oh, okay. And before, it was called the SoCal Speed Shop, Pete Chapuris. Right. And um, he found the engine, and, and Bob McGee was still alive, which wow. was really fortunate. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and we thought he had passed on. And we had done all the research we could to find Bob McGee. Right. And all of a sudden, I got a call from this fellow. It was Bob McGee's son, and, and, I, and he introduced himself. And I said, oh, my gosh, so nice to meet you. I said, I just want to know more about the car. And, and tell me about your dad. He says, you want to talk to my dad? And I'm going, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway, so he, he was alive and well. And we, you know, one of the fun things about 
uh, restoring these old cars, is bringing the original builders back into the picture. So he advised us on everything. He said, I had this kind of head and I ran the wiring like that. And the dash is unique to this car too. So everything about the car, he, he, he was the guy. Bob McGee is, this is the McGee Roadster. It's not the Bruce Meyer Roadster, but uh, it was great fun restoring it with sure. his guidance. Now, um, let's go take a look at the stamps. Let's show the actual stamps. That, when will these be available? Pretty They're soon. available now. We, we printed 100 million of them, and we've already sold 35 million. So 35 million of the car that you caretake is out there for America to see. Great. All right. Let's show you the stamps. Come on, take a look. All right, while well, Bruce is taking the top off the Roadster, let's take a look at the two stamps and meet the artist, John Matos. John, how are you? I'm good. Beautiful good. job. This is obviously Bruce's Roadster. And uh, which car is that? Tell us about that car. That is a car from uh, South Dakota, a gentleman by the name of Graham. He, the funny story about that is we, after we got that car set up, we found out he actually is a supplier uh, for some business that he, he does with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, very good. Now tell us, uh, are you a primarily automotive painter or? No, actually, I, I um, you know, do whatever, whatever shows up. Oh, um, I got a house, the whole yeah, thing. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's bathroom can do some time. No, it's a, a very it, nice job. Tell, how hard you. is it to do one? I mean, is this something you bang out in the afternoon? Does it um, take a few weeks? How long does it take? It, this project began in 2008. Okay. But it goes fairly fast. I mean, I, I'm a digital artist now. Okay. I began as an airbrush artist, obviously. Okay. But, uh, now you say digital artist, what do you mean? It, it uh, I can... Uh, show you the way these things get made now. So. You, oh, so you lay it out like this first, almost like a blueprint. Oh, yeah, yeah, very much so. And then, and then you make these things that are the equivalent of um, like stretching a skin over a wire. Okay, and, I see. Uh, and that's how they get made. These are others and, you've done. Yeah, well these were sketches. Um, I mean, getting to this, to this, these particular cars. Right. Um, the Derry Noyes, the art director on this project, right. sent the cover of Smithsonian that had uh, Billy Gibbons uh, 40. Oh, yeah, uh, I, 40, I know Billy Gibbons' car. Sure. Yeah, yeah, so the red one with the fenders. And so when you started and, the product, stamps were only 42 cents. That's, that's, uh, no, so that shows you how. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, how many of these stamps do you think will be produced? We are going to produce 100 million of them. 100 million, okay. And we've already sold 35 million. Now, when you produce a stamp, you say 100 million, that's it. If, if demand just goes crazy, do you print more? Or do you say to yourself, no, that was a limited run, and for collectors, we don't print anymore, or we just print as many as you can? With the muscle car stamps, we started off with 30 million. We've done three printings, so we've done 90 million oh, okay. and sold almost 80 million. It's like the government printing money. If they need more, you just make more stamps. That's make right. more stamps, yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right. You, you don't have to go to the advisory committee. No, you just, no, 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 that's, that's right. They're going to get involved in that. All right, very cool. Well, John, beautiful work. Hey, thank you. Is this your first uh, a time working with the post office? Well, I've done a total of 11 projects, but, uh, okay. but eight of them have been you know, completed. Oh, so. cool. Very good. Thank you very hey, much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Jay. Thank you very much. I thank think it's Jay. time to take that thing for a ride. Let's see if Bruce has got the top off it yet. I can see we're taking it easy in this car because it's got all period speed equipment, which means the equipment is 70 years old, 80 years old. Uh, the copper heads are almost impossible to find, so we're not leaking water, so I guess they're holding up okay, but don't expect any burnouts. We're not doing burnouts in this. I mean, this is hot rod royalty is what this car is. And it shifts very nicely. Yeah, good. how far we've come. When this car was built, it was really fast. Now you get blown off by, you know, women putting on lipstick and Honda Civics going by, but that's not <laughs> the idea. It's the feeling of this car. You know, it has a great period feel and a great sound. There's nothing like a flathead sound. I don't know if you can hear that motor, but it just... And what's the red line on a flat at about 3,500, 4,000 RPM, yeah, something I like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this car has been... This is really one of the first outings. It's only got about, what, 15 or 20 miles on this motor, right? Right. That's why we, we just want to see what it's like to drive it down the street. Suddenly, it's 1948. If you want to see this car, it's on permanent display, or at least for a while, at the Peterson Museum. 
You know, Bruce is one of the guys is instrumental in getting hot rods up to Pebble Beach, because Pebble Beach, until Bruce came along and, and Ken Gross had always been, you know, the classics, the Pierce Arrows, and finally hot rodding is being seen as a real legitimate art form. Much like low riding, we did low yes. riding a while back on the show, and we got tremendous response to that. But every hot rod you see on the road today, especially 32 Fords, is in some way owes a debt of gratitude to this car, because right. this was the very first one. It doesn't get much cooler than that. Well, you know, you think about hot rodding as one of the purest American art forms. Yeah. Hot rodding's and, like jazz, it's uniquely American. Uh, the jazz, baseball, and it is uniquely American, and, and the ingenuity and, and the technology that came out of hot rodding. It is like baseball. The nice thing is, it doesn't take as long as baseball. That's what I like. <laughs> baseball, you're there all day. Hot rodding, you come and go when you want. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> still a little tight. It's a fresh restoration and it's 102 degrees here today in LA and we're getting a little warm so we're going to head back. Okay well it's 102 degrees today and uh, the brakes need to be adjusted. They're a little tight. As you see they were smoking. We could feel a car pulling so that's why we came back we'll, in. But we'll adjust the brakes. That's what hot rodding is all about. It's not a trailer queen. That's the important part. It's a piece of history that rolls, explodes, and goes down the road. But I want to thank Bruce and, and the Postmaster General also. Thank you very much for coming here. Yeah. And thanks Always for bringing this. I mean, it takes a lot of guts to pull us out of the museum and bring it over here and go driving around with it. So we'll make these little corrections, and we'll keep you posted. So buy the stamp. Buy the stamp. Bruce, thanks again. Thank you, Jay. Mm-hmm. <laughs>